Let me reintroduce you because the number of people just came out right now. So, our next speaker is, is Dr. Stephen Simonian, who is a therapist uh, in California and, and also a member of the Institute for Ergonomic Studies. And he will be speaking on an ergonomic perspective on the health of adolescents. Dr. Simonian. subject, I quickly want to touch upon the topic of uh, what do we mean by ergonomic perspective and how did it develop. Uh, ergonomy was uh, uh, introduced and discovered uh, by Dr. Wilhelm Reich, everyone knows here, and uh, it uh, uh, started, it conceived in the womb of psychoanalysis. Uh, Reich was a student of uh, Freud. Uh, and uh, the ergonomy uh, evolved from psychoanalysis because of psychoanalytic theory's inadequacy, because it was not able to treat, to bring the improvement on, to some patients. Uh, psychoanalysis was, uh, uh, had three major theories. Freud introduced three major theories, libido theory or economic theory, and in that uh, theory, Freud um, de determined that there is an innate psychosexual energy operated in newborn. This energy goes through changes throughout the child's life, and he called this energy as libido energy, um, the source of progression and construction in the person's life. Uh, this energy is the source of propagation of life instincts get their power from this energy and neurosis develops when the energy is obstructed. The second uh, theory of uh, major theory of psychoanalysis or Freud was the topographic theory or the theory of conscious and unconscious and uh, Freud determined that there is a uh, unconscious uh, that exists in people and the conflict in unconscious causes the symptoms, neurotic symptoms. And the third major theory of Freud was structural theory, or the theory of uh, id ego super ego that came later on. <coughs> and uh, Freud also uh, uh, discussed about the different, the neurosis. He discussed two types of neurosis. Stasis neurosis that he said it develops when the um, accumulation of uh, sexual energy, um, uh, dammed up sexual energy causes the uh, anxiety neurosis, and he called it stasis anxiety or stasis neurosis, and he suggested that some advice of the patient in having a healthy sexual life will relieve this uh, neurosis. The second type of neurosis that he talked about was psychoneurosis that was happening because of some conflict that was unconscious and needed psychoanalytic treatment. But uh, the uh, psychoneurosis also had, had some core of stasis neurosis and was drawing its energy from the dammed up uh, sexual energy. Uh, for treatment of this uh, neurosis, Freud, uh, for psychoneurosis, uh, Freud suggested uh, psychoanalytic techniques, which is free association, that the patient was uh, laying on the couch and was talking. Uh, he was supposed to just uh, free associate, and the thoughts, like a, a links of chain, one thought will bring another thought, and eventually will get to the unconscious conflict. And when unconscious was getting conscious, uh, the patient was supposed to get better and improve. Uh, in order, in addition to free association, uh, Freud also suggested dream interpretation and called it a golden road to the uh, unconscious. Uh, Ernest Jones has a book called Life and Work of Sigmund Freud 
And indeed, in that book, he says that Freud once said that it seems to be my fate to discover only the obvious, that the children have sexual feelings, which every nursemaid knows, and the night dreams are as much wish fulfillment as daydreams. Uh, anyhow, these were the suggested uh, ways for the treatment, and uh, uh, Reich was a student of Freud, was doing psychoanalysis, but uh, realized that sometimes these theories do not work. So, uh, in the book of Function of Orgasm, he gave an example of uh, this matter. He says that uh, in 1920, Freud referred a patient, a waiter, for treatment of sexual impotence. Uh, he was totally incapable of having erection. <clears throat> the treatment ran a smooth course, and in the third year, we arrived to reconstruction of primal sin. He was about two years old when this happened. His mother gave birth to a child, and from the adjacent room, he had seen the details of delivery. The impression of a large bloody hole between the legs of his mother became firmly ingrained in his mind, and um, on a conscious level, that remained only the feeling of emptiness in his own genital area. He was a very quiet and well-behaved man. He never got excited. He never became angry or exercised criticism. Reich says that he gave a report about this case to the psychoanalytic uh, the elders or the senior analyst, and he was praised for it, and they considered that his work was well done, and he eventually achieved to the primal scene and the trauma that happened at age two. Uh, but the patient didn't improve. So uh, he was... Uh, um, he said that, well, if he did everything right and he was praised for it and he's, uh, you know, uh, a senior analyst thinks that he, that he has done a good job, then why the patient is not getting better? <laughs> so he uh, realized that there is something wrong with it. Um, he says that he terminated the, uh, the therapy, the treatment, and the, the uh, gentleman that he was treating accepted this uh, termination quietly, um, without any protest, very calmly, um, and uh, with a very nice attitude. So uh, this was after three years of psychoanalysis, of daily psychoanalysis, and now there is no result, and he terminated the, uh, the uh, analysis. For, uh, the right says that later on he realized that his illness actually was this, his character, his nice, polite uh, character that he had, that the sexual impotence was only on, on based on this character, that he, the symptom was based on the character, that um, he had to perhaps concentrate on the character analysis rather than the symptom that he had. So the inadequacies of uh, the psychoanalytic uh, treatments led him, led um, Rach to introduce uh, theories, two theories of his own. Um, Reich has two major theories, the theory of orgasm and theory of armoring. The theory of orgasm and armoring are parallel with each other and then later on they converge and they become uh, integrated with each other, they fit with each other. By the way, regarding to the um, inadequacies of psychoanalytic uh, approach and treatment, uh, in 1993, uh, on the Time magazine, there was an article that for some reason I kept it uh, by name of Is Freud Dead? This is the, 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 the face sheet, and this one is the couch that is out of the window. <laughs> out of the window. <laughs> and on the uh, end of the, uh, the article, the author says, Psychoanalysis and all of its offshoots made in the final analysis turn out to be no more reliable than a countless of pseudosciences that once offered um, unsubstantiated uh, answers or false solace. So, um, in 1993, at least the uh, author of this article found that uh, you know, the psychoanalysis was not uh, giving the result that once people thought that it promised. 
Um, from my point of view, I think this